Through more than two decades at Kenner and Hasbro, Aaron built worlds, told stories, and designed toys for some of pop culture's biggest names, including Transformers, Batman, Star Wars, and more. Join him as he explores the archives and tells you the stories of the creative process behind your favorite toys. This is the Toy Armada with your host, Aaron Archer. So we are back again for another Toy Armada with Aaron Archer. And this is a very special one because just recently we have gotten to see the brand new Transformers Legacy Evolution Commander Class Armada Optimus Prime. And it has caught fire within the Transformer world. People are really excited about it. But what it's also creating is the discussion and looking back at that original toy that came out 20 years ago. And we're here today with the creator of that toy and all the other stuff related to Armada back in the day with all the talented people at Takara Tomy. Aaron Archer, how you doing? I am good. So we're going to be talking about the old Transformers Armada, the super base price point, Armada Optimus Prime. That was a Aaron Archer and Hiro Nori Kobayashi design together. You two worked on it together. And we're just going to go through that old toy, the the pre-production, the history, everything that came afterwards, and then looking towards the future and what uh, Hasbro's doing now with that design 20 years later. So let's just jump into it. So... Where do we begin with the story of the Super Base Armada Optimus Prime? Uh, that one goes back. So we're in an era now where let's let's say Brian Goldner uh, has has come on board and co-development is just starting. Oh, in a year, just so, so two thousand two, let's say. Uh, two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. This is okay. Very end of two thousand. Yeah. So right. this is before I have left Cincinnati. Uh, there was a meeting between. Uh, Brian Goldner and Takara and some other Hasbro people uh, about the co-development, and Takara gave a presentation. And in that presentation, there were a lot of different concepts, and this was their effort to say, hey, if we're going to do co-development, these are the kinds of ideas we'll be bringing to the table. I can't say right now if they were pitching them directly or just, you know, optimistically pitching them, right? So... I have looked back and found that presentation, and that had a IR transforming robot where the concept was you transform part of it and another part will transform to create a combo super robot. So that was definitely a concept that was a, alive before I was involved with what would become Armada. Interesting. Okay. So then I tell the story of uh, an early February 2001 meeting, maybe March, in Rhode Island, where Takara brought models. And there was a model of that concept. It didn't look like Optimus, really, at the time. And I think it even had some uh, web diver kind of parts to it. And it was definitely like a primer white or primer gray kind of model. And that was the concept um, and it might have been there might have been another toy that existed that had a a stand up feature b- built in. So imagine a a rectangle, but hidden in that rectangle was like a scissors action that when it scissored open, that rectangle would rise up right and get higher in the air. Um, they had that kind of toy feature brought on the table, and between those two things that. That is what was the impetus for Hasbro to go. Um, oh, that's an interesting feature. You know, self transformation. We were. Let me take a half step back. When we were going to reintroduce Transformers in this Autobots versus Decepticon way again, uh, G1 2.0, if if I can be so bold, uh, for this generation, obviously Optimus was going to be. The first time we brought him back as a truck with the shield on his face, the Autobot logo, fighting Megatron, the Sept- the Septicon, and um, so we knew we wanted something special with that toy. This is an era where we were going in purposely making toy featured Transformers, so that was a tactical goal going in. 
just just to cut just to cut you off, just to let people know what toy featured toy like you know like what that yeah. means exactly because we live in such a different era today. Yeah. yeah. So so if you think of G one. You know, they transformed. They were largely uh, really popular because the forms were accurate and they had realistic details in chrome. You get into the Beast Wars era, they are super articulated because of the nature of the natural beast form turning into then a robot. So you get a lot of different shapes and, and the ball joint system comes into play, but didn't have a lot of features. Features to a toy company like Hasbro Kenner were spring-loaded features where you hit a hit something and something's going to open up, blossom open, uh, project a, something, um, deploy, uh, open a secret hatch, any number of things um, that really are spring-loaded, trigger, kid-like things for that era that was still happening. Yeah, because um, to, today, that's why I wanted to bring because today yeah. we rarely see that now. Like, if anything, like it's, you know, when you pick up your studio series, Transformers or Legacy Evolution, a spring-loaded missile is an anomaly. You know, yeah. now, now we have blast effects to, to simulate. You know, yeah, so things. an Armada era toy was still geared towards uh, that that six to eight year old kid um, target, maybe a little younger, maybe a little older, but in general, that that was going to reenact stories and want to play out scenarios and fire projectiles, the minicons themselves or triggers for action. Um and that's really what they're built around. They're built around a feature. So this Optimus being the main leader, the first time he's back as a red truck with a cat or trailer, um, we wanted something, you know, the ultimate feature, right? And what could be more ultimate on a Transformer than some sort of self-transforming or auto, we called it auto-transform uh, feature that would make this you know, ultimate version of the super robot come to life. Um, so uh, I say all that, um, don't know where to start because I don't want to start with the negatives, but uh, <laughs> that that was its gimmick. So it was, it was literally made so that the trailer would self-transform, stand up, and you could ha present as a super optimist. Clearly uh, not articulated, not a full set of legs really, very style, you know, very uh, visual. It looked okay, but it wasn't a robot at all <laughs> in a traditional well, sense. Well, let, let's let's start with this then. We'll start with the ro the smaller robot mode and how you guys came to the decision to go with that specific look. That traditionally Optimus Prime's with the windshield chest, you know, and and yeah. Like, so, because that's one thing about your era that people do praise is every Optimus is a different silhouette, you know. If you, if you take every Optimus the past five years, or even dare I say seven years, um, they all have the same silhouette, very Generation One, and then you know, and that's it. So, how did you guys come to that that final design for the smaller robot with the grill well, chest and everything? Yeah, I mean, the the easy answer is I, I we we were in an era where we didn't pay attention to what had come before as closely as they might be doing now, which gave me the freedom to. Uh, interpolate, so to speak, the essence of some of the characters. So we're talking Optimus today. We'll talk, you know, Starscream and other characters at another time. But what was important to me at that time and us at that time wasn't any sort of slavish replica referential thing to G1. We wanted to make a great character of Optimus. And this starts the, my whole long process into the Hasbro IP and character stewardship that I uh, developed because I was able to look at a character like Optimus and go, okay, what? how do we make this a fun toy today? And I, I wasn't going to be afraid to change things or I wasn't... Sm smart and or dumb enough to know what that was going to mean if I did change things. So sometimes you do things because you're you're not you're not really sure there is going to be a consequence, good or bad. Um, so you just do stuff. So the case of the windows on the chest, I I just didn't I didn't think I didn't even think of it. I didn't think it mattered to me. Um 
I also at the time kind of was in a world in my head trying to figure out how if they are in a fight and Optimus gets punched in the chest, why that window doesn't break. Okay. (laughs) You know, and why would that be on his chest, you know, if it's so fragile? Um, I was probably internalizing some of these kinds of things early on, trying to understand how the brand operated or could operate or as we built story worlds, what did that all mean? So what was important was that he was red and blue and had that Autobot logo on there and then that ultimate decision about, you know, the Matrix being a part of that. Um, Those kind of elements the the wedge-shaped shield mask you know that moved um those little things seemed like core optimus elements more so than being very slavish again to that old design well you you bring those up because there, there's a few there's a few things here like just that smaller optimus has that are unique to it like you know normally with an optimus prime today smokestacks are on his shoulders you know it's kind of part of that silhouette and here you put them on his wrists, almost almost a very hot rod kind of, you know, with the the, the tri blasters on his wrists and stuff, um, and then having the them be clear plastic that combine together to make a gun, that then could be held in his hand, like, you know, where where did those like ideas come from? Did you just want to go, oh, we, we could have the clear plastic for the gun, and we could yeah. have the yeah, early on it was it was more of a feature idea that. A few of them were going to have lights in their hands, right? So Hot Shot, obviously, Initially, in, the, yeah. in the Takara version, yeah. has the light-up gimmick. The American, U.S. world global version does not. Um, Optimus kind of was going to operate that same way and did um, to hold the sword and then his gun. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could light those things up. That was an early gimmick, and we were looking for ways to do that. So that's how that happened. Um you know, again, the, the smokestacks, I, I just wanted to make all that stuff usable. Mm. The way we were designing those toys, that stuff was going to be breakaway anyway. And so it was kind of like, well, let's, let's, what if we can combine them and make a, something out of them? And, and uh, the idea to do the uh, moving mouse p- mouthpiece, where did that kind of like, d- just looking at the old cartoon and going, hey, wouldn't it be cool to, yeah, to I do think, that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that happened more on the Takara side, just as, for a fun kind of way to assemble it, and the fun irony that in the yeah. actual Armada show, he <laughs> that doesn't happen at all. His yeah. mouth doesn't move at all. But you know, again, it, it again, it's just as interesting that uh, to do that, pretty cool. Um, what was the other one? And and the Matrix, like the decision to to put that kind of surface detail. It's not a removable Matrix, but it you know at a time when it was still pretty rare to have Optimus Prime toys that had Matrixes with them. Uh, you know, what was the decision to do that? Yeah, I, I, again, early storytelling for me within the product, um, I wanted, you know, in, in, in the Bendy Prime version, right, he doesn't have the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Um, and we could touch on that also as we compare and contrast all this. But um, I just thought it was good for story and thought it was kind of a an element to me that all certified optimuses obviously have in their chest so i wanted to represent that um i knew it couldn't be removed but you know still thought it was was pretty cool it was a recent thing that started happening you know it started with the big convoy through beast wars neo and then car robots robots in the skies optimus prime fire convoy had a little matrix so it started to become this thing with leader toys where well they got to have a matrix you know and then that became literally the gold standard afterwards I mean, and I optim- may have seen um, Takara, Takara put out a plastic little Matrix version. Oh, really? Like a, or maybe like a separate, plastic, ex- maybe metal. Like, maybe it was metal. Like a separate one, like an accessory. Well, no, they they made it for some other purpose. A a G one styled Matrix. Oh yeah, that's the um, New Year's Convoy. They did that. Yeah, yeah. that and was so for that it, thing, it was a G one reissue. Yeah. What year did that come out? Uh, 2001, I want to say. Yeah. I could so be that wrong, thing but... was floating around. Okay. Okay, so that thing was floating around and looked really cool. I think I think they gave me one on a necklace or something. Yeah, it, it had two little necklace hooks. Yeah, and and so that also is a 
is a impetus for for putting it in the armada version it was like oh yeah that's cool yeah i remember that oh yeah let's do our you know let's make sure that's in there yeah okay cool all right um the other thing too is so and this is maybe more of a pre-production thing uh he has on his wheels uh, it says monster convoy on it uh was that probably an early prototype name for it or like a you know a pitch name because there is there is early art of him having a more monster truck kind of look to him which he still kind of also has with the truck mode here it's some of that that i guess dna is still present even with this truck mode yeah so it was never going to be called monster convoy but that i think i wanted something on the wheels um again i wanted an ultimate sense of storytelling that even you know wherever you're looking at these things you're getting uh so some, instead of ha- so instead of having like dunlop it would say Mon- yes you know just yeah, some kind exactly. of just surf- it's just some okay. sort of uh the the brand the fake out brand they use let, on let it be known so monster convoy is a cybertronian brand of tires we'll make that yeah there can- you go. We'll, we'll make there that canon go. now there we yeah. go the wiki is being updated as we speak um <laughs> So, yeah, there's a, no, nothing other than that. It was never a name of the character yeah. or or any of that. All righty, cool. Because that's never been like really uh, and, established and I too think, much. I think if I think back, any time we had any big tired version of Optimus, which that that concept art clearly looks like, mm-hmm. um, and some of the images Eric did and stuff to clean up my drawings. Um, to the Japanese, I believe they had a monster truck vibe. Mm. Now, to my eyes, nowhere near a monster truck, right? But giant tires on a on a truck kind of conveys that. To Not them. to mention, very different from their Hino trucks that they're used yes. to for delivery and stuff. Which yeah, is, yeah, if yeah. you've seen a Hino truck, you don't really see them here in America or Canada. But when you do see them, very tiny. Yeah, so I think that might have played into it also. Um. Another thing I wanted to cover too before we get into like let's say the super mode and stuff is so you have the you have the two clear guns. He also has his own big big gun there too. Uh, was the was the idea like okay he's gonna have the two clear gun combiner thing also a big gun? I guess that's more so just so the larger robot has something different too. I would imagine. Yeah, and it is a thinly uh, well I don't know how to say it a an interpolation as well of the classic Optimus. The old ion blaster. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, ion now blaster. now I'm seeing it. Yeah. It's so kind of can... embedded in there a little bit. And then if you if you you know, we had to adjust for the clear parts and and whatnot, but it, there's a an echo there. Mm, I see intent. it. Well now that you mention it, I do see it a little bit. Um okay, so We'll go to just quickly, because there's not really too much we could cover about the truck mode, but one thing I do want to cover, and we're not going to cover it completely about talking about his combiner elements. That could be saved in the future for a different discussion. But uh, the trailer itself, now it has the hitch in the front for the, the truck mode and everything, but there was a hitch on the back too. How early in the planning of this figure were you guys also planning combiner elements or ex- or trailer extensions, if you will, like the overload and and jet fire afterwards like how early in the development of this toy are you also thinking about the future later on for combiners well jet fire was definitely uh in in that discussion okay because that like right away what, off what the bat didn't, on that what mold. i wouldn't what i wouldn't have planned out yet had been overload and uh or no or no where you know even that that would have been coming in that regard but jet fire from the beginning was a combo partner um of optimus and so they probably just assumed some sort of uh we used to call them trains um mm. you know well, some it, sort it, of it, connector it, for some, whatever it's been done be it's coming. been done it's yeah. been done for historically with transformers going all the way back to like again power master prime but it was god god jinrai in japan trailer extension with god bomber so mm. that's i guess they were probably going like at some point this is going to be used you know yeah Okay. So before we get to the super mode, let's talk about the base mode because it goes. So you transform the figure, you put it into, ro- you goes from truck mode to robot mode. When you put it into robot mode, the truck mode automatically opens up on three AA batteries and it opens up into its base mode. 
It has all these churning and, you know, gear sounds happening that are actually audio sounds, not just the, the plastic gears made out of POM plastic doing it. <laughs> so, uh, and then we have the base mode. So what do you want to say about the base mode that we got here? Well, the base mode was our attempt to have a location to put all your mini cons, uh, in, in whether that be display or storytelling, um, different than how Megatron would use a lot of mini cons. Uh, this was more, they could all stand around. Um, we tried to get different levels in there and, you know, marginally successful at that. Uh, we did a lot of the, I don't know, veneering on this area, this area, but it's largely just trying to catch air and take up space. There's not really much happening there, you know, put in a missile launcher. Yeah. Yeah. You know? get that in there where it was it's you know the missile launcher is not really a feature so much on the robot mode but or even in the trailer a little bit but it's more so it's the main feature definitely with the uh, the base mode here yeah um so you know again kind of just maximizing the story potential of minicons and armada with with the main character if you're going to spend uh what did we say? Forty dollars on this item. Yeah. So Super Base back in two thousand two, two thousand three was a forty dollar USD item, with inflation today about sixty five bucks American today. Yeah. So yeah. the idea of just the auto transform wasn't enough. Just the scale wasn't enough. Apparently, um, having a mini con added isn't enough. Maybe a comic book, but that base mode made all the difference. <laughs> and, and it was also it was also kind of a again another common trend that was happening. Power Master Optimus Prime had a base. Even the original G One Prime, his trailer opens yeah. up, does something. Yeah. There's, Power there's Master Prime. Of that. Yep. When you when you look at the Power Master Prime and you look at this one, there's a similarity with how they tackle making a base with a, a trailer. Even with Fire Convoy, aka the robots in disguise, Optimus Prime, he had some form of base mode with all his armor parts. So another common trend that was happening with uh, these characters was, you know, the, the, the trailer's got to do some kind of play set so that you're getting your value for, yeah. you know, you're, you're getting a robot, you're getting a super mode, you're getting the comic, you're getting the sticker, you're getting the mini con, and you're getting a play set for that because the super base at the time was the highest price point of the Transformers Armada line before Unicron came around. That's, that's much later in the brand, but so it's something yep. where, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. And then uh, you take that uh, you take that robot mode, you half transform it into the half uh, upper half of the super mode, and then once again the trailer twists and turns and starts making noise and starts pushing itself upright, and then it becomes the lower half of the super mode. Some some of the fans refer to it as his pants. Pants mode. Um, pants <laughs> mode, because well, it's mostly because of Jetfire, because then it was changing pants, you know, yeah. so. But um, then we have the lower half, and then you plug it in. It makes those sounds. The Japanese version had an extra sound effect. It would say Super Comboy. Uh, it would actually have an audio thing where the American version just had uh, just more of those grinding gear sounds and little crunching and everything. You plug it in, and then you got the Super Mode ready to go. So what do you think of the Super Mode? What were the, the goals with this one here? Because it's a very different, very unique Optimus Prime looking face this time around, something that's never been done prior to that for that interpretation of an Optimus face? Well, I was really influenced by the R.I.D. Optimus. Really? Okay, interesting. the combo mode of that one kind of does mm, have... Yeah I, yeah, I could see uh, in the case of like the, the antlers, yeah, probably, yeah. Well, the, the, the segmented faceplate a little bit. Okay. I, I think was in there. Uh, on the super version. Like yes, yeah. comboed up to... Um, anyway, I remember looking at that one and kind of being influenced by that, maybe with the ears as well. Um, and those are like, uh, echoes of like truck smokestacks. You yeah. Know? Um, so that's me trying to say this is the ultimate truck guy robot. Um, so I just, I just was trying to think of what the most regal Optimus could be at that time. You know, if he was getting into the super mode, and that's it's a little bit of a crown he has, if mm. you think of it that way. It's got some the wings and this single fin on his head gets a little taller. 
And again, the, the use of, well, we'll probably get into it, might as well now. So the use of gold plastic on the Western version, too, in those areas to give that regal look. Uh, the Western version did use gold plastics, which was a little bit of a uh, an issue years later as a collector for this. Um, the Western version of this Armada Optimus Prime did have some gold plastic syndrome issues in, in those antlers and mm. specifically in the arms of the, the smaller robot mode which when you try to transform it into the super mode, you do could potentially run the risk of breaking everything because it's it's kind of fragile. Some people say it's not GPS, it's a design flaw, but as someone that has bought and sold many of these and who has messed obviously with the Japanese version that doesn't use gold plastic, uh, it's it's the GPS. That's really oh, what yeah. it was. I mean. um, if you view the Japanese version, I'll post photos obviously in, in the post editing here. The Japanese version used yellow plastic in those areas and it's solid still to this day. I did a live stream messing with one, you know, 20, 20 odd years later and it's still solid as it was the day uh, it was created. So it had that issue. But otherwise, between the two, I mean, it, it's just mostly paint deco stuff. Uh, there was supposedly there was a, a tab difference between the american first print run and the japanese one there's tabs on the arms that give more articulation that were removed with the japanese one to make it have more range of motion uh, but otherwise pretty much the same thing and uh might as well cover also so he has that little button on his shoulder to do the light up gimmick he has yeah. that too for the clear weapons and again to hold the star saber like you mentioned also which is another clear accessory that was planned um aside from that i think I think that's pretty much it for the super mode. Anything else you want to comment about it before we get into his little buddy? Yeah, no, I, I, no, I can't recall the specking of the gold, unfortunately. I and I know I'll just give an, an overview of. It was our tradition at Kenner anyway, and Hasbro somewhat, for a while to go with a more sophisticated palette. Mm. That that is, if something was bright red in a cartoon, you wouldn't want to match that necessarily in a product because it would look too young or too pop kid like. Um, so we kind of subdued a lot of color. I often. guess play school might be the best term. Maybe play school. Yeah, that's where that stuff lived. Those brighter colors. Yeah, live that way. So we purposely kind of changed and shifted, and things like yellow would go gold or. Uh, you know, bright red would go more crimson, gray would go gunmetal, uh, you know, we rarely did black. Um, but that, that was the mentality. I can't decide if it was a good mentality or not, but that was the attitude at the time. Well, and, and especially, you know, I know that as fans, we didn't really start noticing GPS being an issue until I want to say like, maybe 2003, 2004, when people went to go to transform like their Beast Wars Grimlock and, uh, you know, that thing just crumbling. And then yeah. people start going, uh-oh, because it, it, you know, GPS isn't an initial problem. It's something that happens over years. And I think people didn't start realizing that until then. And then, of course, once people started realizing it, including Hasbro, they slowly started not using that choice of color for Transformers anymore. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's it's not, I mean, gold... Plastic syndrome is unique to our hobby. Uh, you know, there's sneaker guys, and st there's all kinds of materials that are breaking down in people's mm. collector boxes and stuff. Uh, it's pretty amazing and wild. Oh, you, the, if you're a My Little Pony collector, it's about vinyl breaking down, and, yep. and they they call it pony cancer. Yep. Uh, if, if you're a guy who collects GI Joes, then you're dealing with the the rot of the little O ring. You know, so there's there's always there's always you know these toys when they were created they didn't think about well how's it going to last in 20 years you know i think i think a lot of those companies were like well let's just hope there's not too many in a landfill you know so kind of a, a, a different a different frame of mind uh so let's get into the next guy so the next thing we're going to jump into is that of the minicon which pretty much is the whole focus of transformers armada it was all about the minicons so optimus prime specifically the super base one was unique among all the other Transformers that had Minicons in Armada because his Minicon stood on its own on the mold tree. What I mean by that exactly is all the other Minicons that were paired off with a character, a jolt to his hotshot, a lift door to his smokescreen, they shared on the mold the colors together. They were on the mold, they were on the sprue together and the tooling. 
and that's why a jolt was red and so had and the hot shot was red why the blues and oranges on a lift door were found on a smoke screen i could go on and on with every character but optimus was unique with spark plug his minicon his minicon was yellow optimus didn't have any yellow on him unless it was painted on and that was the case where spark plug was on his completely own separate tooling separate mold separate sprue the belief was that it was to be used for future stuff, promotional items and everything like that because of the uniqueness of this being the leader's character having his own minicon. What is the whole story, Aaron? Lay it on us. Yeah, um, he is unique in that way that, that Sparkplug is kind of in its own mold. Um, Takara made a lot of use out of that. Uh, it could have been tactical on their part to have a, I would call a free radical minicon for use that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't recall much discussion discussion about that. We could have easily, you know, overpainted any mold color if we had to. Um, but like you said, it got its own unique uh, plastic injection mold. So, um, we picked yellow as a dynamic color, different than the red and blue and gray that we thought of as Optimus. Um. Clearly, there's an echo to Bumblebee in that item, mm-hmm. especially uh, in the the head the head tooling. Yeah, so um, I, I I don't know why I did that um, <laughs> per se because obviously Hotshot was kind of a Bumblebee esque character. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just wanted that head shape back, or we knew it was going to be yellow, so I just went ahead and put the yellow guy's head on the yellow car, and on um, a small guy too. Yeah. Um, you know, again, this was early days for me, so I was making a lot of decisions on my gut and preference and just kind of picking up pieces that I remembered and liked from the brand, not not necessarily knowing the weight uh, of them um, or what chaos that might do by using a wheeljack name here or there or whatever. Um, so, yeah, so spark plug again, that's even an echo of a G1 name right um so that that guy's kind of an echo of a lot of different things isn't he yeah well especially the, the bumblebee looking kind of head sculpt he's, he's a lamborghini that's yellow so maybe you can say a little bit of sunstreaker in there yeah. you know you get you got you got the the spark plug name one of the human characters from the g1 cartoon and then even if you want to go even deeper you know optimus prime is called convoy in japan but spark plug in japan was called prime which prime to them didn't mean anything at the sure. time. So there's even that that element where this character is called Prime, so it's a leader character because the other character, the other like the bad guys, Minicon is leader one. This one's called Prime. Prime also represents first. There's all kinds of deep elements written into that there. And again, being his own tooling, they did plan a whole bunch of promotional items afterwards. The very first Armada promo item in Japan exclusively was a magazine green prime aka spark plug standalone release and then of course there'd be i mean the see every color of the rainbow was that that mold was repainted into afterwards so it's a fantastic little mini con yeah yeah a lot of fun on that one um and again he unlocks a whole bunch of uh little gimmick again he plugs onto optimus and everything like that uh not so much um i guess like you know optimus when he when he has his little mini con activation gimmicks and stuff there's not as many on him because i guess the big selling point in is again the base mode the the super mode and all of that stuff Where yeah some getting of the other him big was and then just having a location for the minicons was enough for us at the time yeah yeah just to sit on the shoulder because in the show it's like his big you know the way that they sell it in in the show is it, it attaches to his shoulder and somehow that unlocks a big firing mechanism where in all honesty that doesn't really happen on the toy it's more just hey you know here's all these mini con ports you could plug them in there and that is that so uh at the end of the day like uh the optimist were you guys satisfied with uh the the final product you felt that you guys pretty much achieved what you wanted to you set out to do yes so i think we we put out a compelling transforming featured toy that was the leader character um, but I think we knew instantly and quickly that it had its own limitations because of that feature, which directly get you to Bendy Prime or the Deluxe Optimus Prime, 
uh, yeah. one so that you could have, you know, you could have this great, you know, uh, full tilt version, which is going to be, you know, $40. Um, but if you didn't have that, the means for that, we, we were able to translate that design into a different scale. So a lot of the problems that I would say the big one has are already somewhat overcome with the little one. Um, which, which is basically the small figure articulation, um, mm-hmm. impose imposability. Um, but we also made the little bendy prime to be able to pull the same trailer, um, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, they were kind of designed with similar goals in mind, but the, I, I, I think we achieved our main goal, which at the, at the beginning on the outset of our Mata definitely was feature based and and action toy gimmick fate based and and this is clearly our our biggest one um because if you even look a year down the road when we do get to unicron at a higher price point it doesn't have as many bells and whistles as this optimus had right so we yeah we clearly pulled back from that that sort of play feature or need and i think again like we started this conversation it was something takara had been working on in the background for some application someday in some line um and so it was more of a one-off maybe in hindsight if i look at it 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 definitely was in a lot of ways because we've never seen anything like that since i mean this thing came out 20 years ago there has not been a transformer where you transform the toy and then some ir kind of thing goes on and the, the trailer transforms or even anything else transforms it's very unique just to this yeah very much so and and that that was the time and place. A bunch of people had moved from Cincinnati to Rhode Island. New people were coming onto the brand that had never touched it before. Takara was unleashed with this ability to present different toy ideas and features that took, Hasbro had not considered um, or wouldn't even consider for a while pr- previous to that. So it was a dynamic time, and we were looking to make fun, interesting things. And this 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 feature in this item really highlights that. Now, then we could talk about where this mold goes afterwards, because there is a little bit of an interesting history there. So the first time we see this mold used again uh, is in Japan. They love to do their lucky draws. And mm-hmm. uh, TV Coon magazine in August of 20, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, 2003, I got to get out of that 2020 vibe, uh, 2003, uh, did their Kinpika convoy, which translates into Shining Golden Convoy. Uh, 58 of these were made and sent out randomly to subscribers of TV Coon Magazine that sent in a postcard. And it was a pretty much your your Optimus Prime here, super base, but with completely covered in gold chrome, 100% mm-hmm. head to toe. Typical lucky draw stuff, uh, probably worth a ton of money today. The next one we have here, and this is where it gets interesting. So this is the first time we get our, our next retail repaint of this mold, and it's the Power Links Optimus Prime. Came out in 2003, uh, in the middle of the year, and this was pretty much you guys taking that mold, uh, giving it a brand new coat of paint. The the little tab uh, changes that were done on the Japanese version were implicated here too, and it's supposed to represent uh, Optimus's visual transformation in the show, where in the ep- uh, episode 51, uh, Origin, which is the literally the second to last episode of the show. He gets a new color scheme. Now, granted, the color scheme that's represented here is not 100% like it looks in the show. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna ask, is that because this was developed way before the episodes were developed? Because this episode aired December 12th, 2003. Again, literally before 2004. Very late uh, in the lifespan of probably the development, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to remember that level of. Okay. detail at this point um i know that we we would have done those redecos to stand apart on shelf and when you have a high this is in general in toys when you have a higher price point item um the higher the price point goes the more of your market you're kind of carving off right Mm. um because there's there's always thresholds along the way of, of discretionary income for for let's just say this kind of toy line. So as you get higher and higher in that price point, 
even though you may sell enough of them to make it worthwhile, you don't sell anywhere near the leader that you do a deluxe, right? Of course. Anywhere near. So you always have available tooling opportunity with those higher priced items if you can find a good place for them, right? Um, so in the case of Armada, we knew we were able to uh, potentially affect the show animation, somehow getting a color change, and it worked for Red Alert and Hot Shot and a few of them. Um, and I don't know why Optimus didn't quite match up um, timing-wise. It does wise. happen. It, it does happen very like the ones yeah. you mentioned before, Red Alert and Hot Shot. I believe those happened. Oh, I want to say like episode. four. 41 like much earlier and that then that falls into you know animation production and when they were working on those episodes where this literally happens the second to last episode of the yeah. show yeah so it was I, probably I guess, opportunistic with something we probably yeah. requested they did it out of obligation or because they said they would um you know or or maybe we just you know i don't know but the real uh so so that really is an opportunistic item to throw into the line later in the year to get kind of a second bite at the apple um, with with tooling availability. If we put out the same Optimus for that 18-month cycle, it would have just been too much. Um, retail would have just been like, yeah, we've, we've seen that. We know what we can do with it. So believe it or not, getting a redeco, even if it's limited numbers, kind of is worth it. Um, and then we did the dramatic redesign of, of spark plug on that one yeah spark plug gets a brand new tooling at least in this case he gets these two little uh fog lights on the back of his lambo mode and he gets because again the luck of it being its own tool and its own mold yeah. uh, he could be completely chrome this time if he needs yeah. to be so that that is one of my favorite mini cons um that i did um Another one of those I probably did on the fly in, in Japan. We're like, hey, we got to redo this mold because we're going to do it in Chrome. So I've said in the past, you can't necessarily just do Chrome, uh, use Chrome molds um, in every case. So maybe they had to change them uh, to be more Chrome ready. And that's why well, we got to redesign it. I can't the, recall. The, the choice to make it Chrome, was that because, well, here's Spark Plug. He's like a bumblebee. And so this is a gold bug, or is that just a happy coincidence? That's just a happy coincidence. Okay. <laughs> just uh, it, as much as that works out, I hear you. Yeah. But um, what I think it was was a, a way to just bring, <laughs> pardon the pun, some shine to that product. <laughs> and at the time, I think, uh, you know, we didn't, we were still figuring it all out. So we thought that a minicon that was different and shiny maybe would be a different reason to purchase that item. With new tooling, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if that was sound thoughts, but you can see our pattern of thought anyway. Yeah, that puts something... It's, it's more so to sell it into the retailers, I would imagine, more than anything. <laughs> well, amen, brother. Um, yeah, I, I think exactly it. That, you know, hey, we got a shiny Minicon, and then, you know, that that sometimes does enough, yes. <laughs> so, so the more accurate color scheme that would be associated with this, Japan would get later on. We'll get into that in a moment. That was the Magna Convoy DX set. But we still have a few other repaints uh, that this mold saw before even that one. Uh, there was a uh, Kmart Black Friday edition, which was, uh, I've honestly, I don't even own this one. I have to track it down. Uh, the Battle for the Matrix Armada Optimus Prime. It was a Black Friday exclusive at Kmart. It's pretty much our Optimus that we have, but now the front part of the trailer and any of the associated red areas yeah, it's like are they, now like a goldish kind of thing. It's like they swapped I, the red for some yeah. sort of ugly tan gold. Yeah, I have no idea what their logic was here. So the, the big ah. selling point with this was because it was a Black Friday item, it also came packaged with Jetfire, so it was, it was a like a gift set kind of item. Also came with the Adventure Minicon team packed in, and oddly enough, uh, spare long arms for some reason that were from Red Alert was also in this little set. Again, very weird little set. Uh, not much really that can be said about it. It's just it, in the 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 journey of this mold, and what happens is at some point for Black Friday in 2020 and 2003, excuse me, there was a gold repaint for that cab version that was exclusive to Kmart. Again, how exclusives work with you guys, I imagine at some point Kmart, when it still was a thing of any kind of uh, retail yeah. power, 
they probably said to Hasbro, hey, we'd like an exclusive for Black Friday, I guess. Yeah, so how that works is uh, any number of retailers would like to have a reason in their advertising and or promotions to have unique reasons to drive people to the stores. So uh, at different times, hey, we have, you know, we're, this is the only place you can get this. Or uh, in a set with that much item inside of it, they got a really good price, probably like a Sam's Club type of price, right? That's what I would imagine, yeah. Um, to offer a bunch of stuff at a very uh, probably, you know, reasonable, like, wow, I can get all this stuff for that price. Great. Um, and not to, not to mention if it's if it's Black Friday in 2003, that's already near the end of the year, which was also kind of near the end of Armada's life cycle before going into Energon. So it was also in a lot of ways, at least in the Western market, Japan's a different story, but at least in the Western market, another way to put out that mold one last time. Not just the Optimus, but the, the Adventure yes. Minicons, the Jetfire, you know, which also saw repaints. But again, that'll be a discussion for another podcast. Yeah. And so you that's, know. you know, they came in, hey, we'd like something probably for such a price. And, you know, hey, well, this is what we could put together for you. This is the tooling we have and so on and so forth. You're absolutely right. And then we go back to Japan. But I don't remember that item. Uh, that would have been yeah, done. Me, me too. That would have been done by a promotions group um, that we would have told they told them that the, this is the access we have to different molds, and they would have sold, tried to sell that in. Interesting. I, like me, I remember it, but it's one that like I don't have because of the lack of accessibility as a Canadian to get that kind of stuff. And it just totally like I forgot about it because I, I look at my collection I'm like, oh, yeah, don't got that one. Uh, the next one we have here is now we go back to Japan, and this is the last item that comes out of the Transformers Armada line in Japan, known as Micron Detsetsu, aka Legend of Micron. And we have the Magna Convoy DX set. Also, them too doing a nice little big uh, little set here for the Japanese market. Their la the very last Armada product in their market of their X Dimension sub subline of repaints and everything, where you get a very very show accurate in those last two episodes painted Armada Optimus Prime as well as Overload in Clear and of course which he was called Ultra Magnus there along with uh, the mini cons the street action team mini cons done in a new color scheme and uh, just a nice looking big product there uh, probably one of those more uh, popular and rare items that a lot of Armada collectors try to get today just because of the unique color schemes and how show accurate it is today. Uh, anything you want to say about this one? No, no. These yeah. things started coming out fast and furious, and by the yeah. time we're talking, the products coming out at the end of Armada, I am already more than halfway through Energon. Yeah, that, well, that's why this one came very late in the life cycle. And, the, and speaking of Energon, the very last time we would ever see this mold, which was Costco ran an exclusive at the time under the Energon imprint, uh, they were like, well, we, let's do a Costco exclusive and put out some product. At the time, Energon was the name of the game. And they took that old Armada Optimus Prime, packaged him with uh, Overload again, put him in a two-pack, and gave him a unique color scheme and sold through 2004 Costco. Mm -hmm. So, And this is where you get the the very garish one. I have this one, too, with the, the yellows and the greens. And I have no idea how they came onto that color scheme, but... Yeah, so these are these again are items that are done outside the main group. Um, another group of designers would take available molds and work with these different partners to make it the costing all work out and make it exciting enough for them to, you know, pick up these items. Uh, so I can't tell you why they look the way they look. But. <laughs> yeah, but it is a unique color scheme. Yeah. So that's it, more or less, for that original original toy years later uh wonder festival 2019 their winter wonder festival we would see a prototype of a armada optimus prime in a very voyager kind of scale uh done in a prototype gray just sitting there we didn't really know the whole story for it even hasbro internal was like oh it's something that we were planning but we just didn't have a place for it and it just kind of sat in purgatory for the past couple of years and then just recently, and this is what kind of spawned our big discussion here today, we finally got to see the Transformers Legacy Evolution Commander Class Armada Optimus Prime. Now, you've seen it too. Um, 
looks really good. Uh, we even did uh, some videos online. <laughs> I posted on Twitter that went a little crazy, uh, showing how it it the attempt to mimic the animation model is fantastic, and everything going on there. What do you think of this now? Seeing something that you worked on twenty years ago and its interpretation with that commander class budget which is between $85 and $86 today as of uh, 2023 what do you think of it yeah i i mean first of all i i love it um i i i'm excited that you know i don't, character versions and and or characters themselves of my era you know are are cycling back you know 20 years uh and it, you know, if I look back on the toys that I did and about those action feature type play patterns, you know, one of the things I look back on with somewhat disappointment is, you know, they don't have articulation. They are encumbered with or hampered by the features such as Hot Shots Bazooka. Um, and so looking at an item like this new Optimus, seeing his super robot mode, lower body articulated and, and arms being able to do what they do. Very cool. Um, very satisfying to just see a character I designed in a much better format, um, honestly. So that just shows the power of eras, you know, um, how, how how good, you know, the characters are cool and how you apply the different techniques can change them a lot. And that's, and that's something too, that's, you know, what you mentioned eras, you know, like how each, each era of Transformers had different designers with different goals that existed for uniquely those eras. And that's why, like you mentioned at the beginning of this, Armada was a, an aim for that five-year-old to maybe seven-year-old price point, you know, kid today, that would be like Hasbro looking at the rescue bots line or something, you know, and, and Uh, everything yeah, Everything more. we have today is more like almost aimed at that teenager to adult collector with this, the studio series, the legacy evolution. And that's kind of like like this item we're looking at here today is that this is clearly aimed at that, that kid who played with it 20 years ago, the original. Yeah. So what, what, what makes me satisfied, I guess, it is now that we do live in the era we live in, to have an optimist like this come out. That, that sits on your shelf more, you know, uh, cool and... Uh, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, more aesthetically <laughs> pleasing, to be sure. Um, you know, I, I can take pride in the creation and, and a lot of the design details that are on even the new one. Yeah, um, a lot of it. Come come from that original, very, very, very honorific. And uh, the Matrix, especially, like all of that going on there. Now that it's removable, you yeah. know, like... So I know I, I don't want to go out of turn, but I, I reached out <laughs> and uh, you know I, I found out who who did it on the Japan side and who did it on the U.S. side, and I I definitely reached out and said thank you and told them they they certainly honored the design and uh, awesome. any contribution I had to the brand they 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 did it justice for sure and that for an old designer like me you know that's all you can ask for. Is that's these, fantastic. To hear. These things still linger on and uh, people care. And they do it right, and they did they did a heck of a job here. The only complaint, I guess, that I have, like everyone else, is where are the minicons. Yeah, um, you know what? And we'll that's, get there. I'm sure we'll get there. I, but I, uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Like I, I have my own theories on how they could tackle it because there, there's again, uh, that, that's a whole other deeper discussion. But it is something I feel they'll probably get to it. I think. And, and I, I had this discussion before. The, the eras now, the, the shift is, is that kids who were, and, and we see it in every time I do my live streams, there's people that are, that were five years old or 10 years old when Armada was out, and they're 30 now. Yeah. You know, they're 30 years old. They, they have their first job. They get, they have their first big paychecks, and that's their Optimus. That's the one that they grew up with. That's, that's what they remember watching on Cartoon Network. And now they want to have their their slavishly amazing animation accurate version after the G1 guys got theirs, after the Beast Wars guys got theirs, you know? Yeah. So it's it's time for, for the Armada kids who are now in their thirties. <laughs> yeah, it makes me theirs. you know, it makes you know, if you take that logic trail down the line, um, 
uh, you know, there's, we're, we're in for a lot of cool stuff, but like, are we going to see like the ultimate, ultimate Subaru alternator someday? I like, honestly, like, are they going to, if you take alternators for what it was the same way they take some of these G1 or Armada designs and then really amp them up, how, what is an amped up alternator look like? Oh my of God. Course. Well, that's just, I, I that's going to be amazing. I think sooner or later, I think sooner or later, everything is going to get its chance at bat. I think that the need for something fresh within the Transformers brand, and, and it's it's funny to say something fresh, but then going back 20 years, but it's just, I, I think that because, you know, we, we hit a point where there was a lot of sameness. It's a lot of G1 Prime, a lot of G1 designs, and when you now could go back and do these hot shots, these red alerts and star screams even that, ha- that have their own unique silhouette to them. And the optimist being the centerpiece of that. And just the reception that I saw from people, you know, like the transformer fans, there's one thing I could say is they usually never agree on anything. It's always either it's the worst thing ever or the best thing ever. <laughs> but I think everyone in agreement was really excited about this. Even people who didn't care for Armada, but they appreciate uh, the design and the engineering that's going on here because whatever you guys did back then, and then of course, which was then turned into animation and really given that, you know, that epic look to it, is now in figural form here today and very yeah. present. And what you guys were trying to achieve, if you took out the toyetic stuff, if you took out the electronics and having to have an auto transforming, you know, trailer and stuff, which again it would have been impossible to put articulation into that figure and achieve all the other things you guys were setting out to do. Yeah. Not, not, yeah, not at least then. cost, at least cost wise, especially, you know, maybe it could have been, but then the the figure would have been $200, but we're not yeah, working on so, Soul of Chagokin. So that, yeah, that was a nice surprise to see come through, albeit through, you know, dubious means. So I'm, we are all looking forward to seeing the slick shots Oh yeah, um, I certainly am, and yeah, it's very exciting. Very exciting to see where where the rest of it goes from here. You know, there's several other characters people have had on their wish list, so it's a lot well, of fun. Well, we'll close it with this: If you, what would you like to see next done? If you could pick one that could be updated, of let's just say we we'll, won't go into your whole catalog, but let's just say from the Armada era, we have. We have uh, Megatron's in the pipeline. We know that one. We have Hotshot right now, Starscream, and Optimus. Who else would you like to see of the Armada guys? Who would be the next one you'd like to well, see? Well, I'm always going to say Vector Prime. But that's that's Cybertron. That's yeah, why I was but so say, like, Sideways, really. Sideways, yeah, me too, actually. That'd probably be and cool. Tidal Wave. Oh, you yeah, know. that's true. And Tidal Wave. No, Tidal I mean, Wave for sure is going to but tidal wave tidal wave obviously has its own complications yeah. um so sideways is probably a more realistic uh opportunity but if they're not doing mini cons then that is its own issue um so I, yeah. i'm just i'll just go for the ride and see where they end up yeah that's awesome stuff all right aaron that's it more or less we wanted to talk about the old optimus and then look at the new optimus let us know what you guys think, the listeners. Did you grow up with this? Was this something uh, that you're excited about with the new one? And otherwise, this is the Toy Armada with Aaron Archer. Aaron, thank you again for taking the time to talk about the robots in the skies, especially the ones that you worked on heavily. Yeah, always fun. Always fun. All right. Take care, everyone, and we'll talk to you again real soon in the future.